Hello everybody, Dolphin Oracle here again tonight. A little live USB action going on here. What I'm running right now on this system is my 128 gigabyte USB 3 system, USB device. However, this is not on the machine I normally run it on. I normally run it on a Lenovo S21e netbook because it only has a minuscule hard drive and the live system works really well on that laptop. I actually have Antic 16 installed on that laptop, for, uh, which works wonderfully, actually, on that particular machine. Um, but I digress. What I want to show you guys here today is the remaster system. In the forums and in the manual, you'll often hear us refer to remastering your USB stick. What do we mean by that? Well, let's take a little walk down the live USB file system. So I'm crack open Thunar here. Again, this is the live USB. You can see the installer up here. I haven't changed it in a while, so the, you can delete that, but I've left it there for whatever reason. <sighs> and first thing you'll see is in the live USB area, in the demo account area. And actually, I think if you make a new account, it'll show up too, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, live USB storage, you can... This is access to your whole drive. Now, if you note... This is the video I'm actually recording. I'm recording to the useful, uh, to the file storage area of the USB stick. It's not going into the root persistence file and the home persistence file. What are those? Well, if you don't know, stay tuned because we're going to cover that. Um, so if you'll note, my free space on this drive is 5.3 gigabytes. That's because I have a 6 gig um, uh, root uh, persistence file. It's partially full. It's got some updates in it, but I've done a remaster occasionally. So this stick is actually up to date with everything that I've installed from MX since release, since December. All the updates and all my apps that I normally use. And that way, if I need to reinstall onto my onto my main machine, I can do that, or I can get everything I need uh, on my on my netbook that I travel with. Uh, you'll see I've got Chrome installed. I've got uh, 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 Google Chrome, I said already, Penta in the graphics department, I got QT Creator in the development, and all sorts of things, Handbrake, Caden Live is actually on this stick, and I'm recording with Simple Screen Recover and GovC View right now. So, on this machine with the USB stick, I'm not using the hard drive at all. So, let's go into where the area on the drive, we'll go to the root file folder, and this is the live. This won't be on a normal system, That's just, this folder will be not present. It's created by the live boot. I'm going to right click on that and say open root Thunar here because that folder is locked to a normal user to keep us from screwing things up. So maybe I should say don't try this at home today? Eh. I'm not going to mess with any actual files. So I'm going to mess around. So this is the live system and you're going to see a lot of things. Now in this in this file system a lot of things happen. Um, the well, you know what, let me explain the files themselves. So if I go into this device here, it's boot dev. That's going to give me the actual live USB. This is the actual top level directory of the live USB device that I use to make the stick. And you'll notice it has 116 gigabytes free. That's my USB. It's 128 gig USB. It's got two partitions, one for the EFI boot and the rest for Linux. So you're going to find several folders. You're going to find a file called Made by Live USB Maker, if you use Live USB Maker. Uh, and also, in the Annex folder, you see all sorts of things. There's a state folder that's going to contain state files. These are the kinds of things that it saves or excludes whether you're running live or not, uh, running your live persistence or not. These are handy things to know um, down if, if you want to get really fine-tune your live USB experience. Mostly I leave these alone because they work they work generally well. You can do it as a general or as a machine specific, which is kind of cool when you think about it. Who, who, nobody else's live USB does that, and I mean that. Nobody. You don't need the persistence files for that to work. You do need a writable media, so it doesn't work on a CD, obviously, because that's read-only, but live USB, that will work. Okay, we got some other files here, but let's let's talk about some particular items. So you got a couple files here I want to point out. You got Linux FS, which is the main where your apps are, the main MX file system. 
that comes on the ISO, or if you've done a remaster, it ends up in there. Everything's up in there. So everything uh, except for ch any changes are in this file. Rootfs is where those changes are stored. That's the persistence file that's created at boot time. Um, this stick happens to have a six gigabyte persistence file. That's the biggest the system will let me create. However, that lets me go a long time between remasters, so I can do up system updates, I can install apps, uh, and all that sort of thing without having to worry about running out of space too awful much. And then I have a home FS persistence file, which is more like a mounted partition than a um, than the root FS. So what happens is changes that are in root FS. Uh, files that are in rootfs that are different than linuxfs, the rootfs ones get priority. So if you make changes to your system, and this, uh, they're saved in this file, this file isn't actually touched. So every now and then it's good to do a remaster to, to consolidate the CRUD, because you can get double items. Let's say I have Google Chrome installed in linuxfs and it doesn't update. Well that entire new, any file on that new update is got to be in this rootfs file, which can double actually double the storage space required on the stick. Now, on a 120 gig stick it doesn't matter so much, but on an 8 gigabyte stick it might. Okay, you also are going to see in my folder I got a couple of odd items. I got some old files. These are leftovers from old uh, remasters. They're created from when remasters. I'm going to show you that in a minute. So anyway, that is the basic. The rest of this is kind of generic stuff. This is the the initial RAM drive for the for the uh, the system and there's the, the kernel image and stuff so this is the main folder structure you don't need to know any of what I just told you but sometimes it's good to know where things are so the three main parts you need to worry about Linux FS whoops root FS and home FS those are the three files and if you never set up partition a partition uh, a persistence setup all you have is Linux Linux FS alright so let's go with that in mind let's check one other item I'm gonna close this you saw in the uh, in the folder that there was a live USB or storage item in my home folder. That lets me access that 116 gigs of space that's on my USB stick without filling up the root persistence file. So that's for files that I don't want in the persistence file. So this is mostly data. That's why I'm recording my video there. So so you saw that in in there uh, in this in the system. And you it's just like a regular folder. It actually is more like a regular a different drive. Uh, so you see the file when I'm dragged it, it didn't move, it actually copied. Okay, so just so you know, that's how that works. Alright, so I'm going to show you the remaster tool. Now it's in MX Tools, it's also in the menu, but it's in MX Tools right here is Remaster CC, Remaster Control Center. Now this doesn't show up in an installed system because it doesn't do anything in an installed system. So Please no forum posts of that. Oh, remaster CC is not is not present in tool, MX Tools. MX Tools hides it. It's still on the it's still on your computer, but it's it's hidden. It doesn't do anything unless you're running live. So I'm gonna run it. Okay, and it's gonna give us this nice little menu. It's gonna give us some basic things. So basic operations. So for with persistence, it's going to let us see, and it's kind of hard to see with the default dark theme, but, and I'm sorry about that, I should have changed it to the light theme. Um, it's going to show all kinds of information, like here is when my rootfs file, persistence file was created, how big it is, how much space is used, uh, the backup file's not there, uh, I have do have an old file, and that's here. The roll the rollback system will use that. I mean, hopefully, I'll be able to show that sometime. That's hard to capture in a video. Check out the manual; it tells you how to do it. Uh, Linux is old. It shows the old one from my last remaster. That's on the stick. So it tells us all kinds of interesting things. Now we it'll it'll let us resize, but I've already maxed out the size that the system allows, so I'm not going to bother with trying to resize. Uh, but this does let you uh, you can fix and delete outdated files. It lets you pick which ones you want to get rid of. So it's very hand-holding, so you won't accidentally delete something important. This hand, hold your hand through the process. I will stop fixing and deleting. So anyway, there's all sorts of items in there. You can, you can explore um, the, the files themselves and looking for the changes. Uh, I am not going to do that right now, but there's, there are some things you can do there. But the main thing that I use, remaster, uh, yes, quit that. 
I'm quitting the, the, the app, is the, uh, let's see, uh, the main thing I use is the remaster stick. But if you need to configure your live persistence, you can do that. Uh, I run static persistence all the time because it mount, it leaves this, this, the root file on the hard drive. It doesn't, on, on the USB stick, it doesn't load into RAM. By default, the uh, there is a version of our persistence, that, and the persist all will do this, will load your F, root FS file into RAM. Now, the system I use the live USB on doesn't have all that much RAM, so I don't want that file loaded into RAM, so I run the static. But if you were running that other system, you could use the configure live persistence to change how that file is saved. Uh, automatically, when you log out, semi-automatically, where it will ask you when you log out, and manually, where you save it when you t- I tell you to save and no other time, buddy. Uh, that's how that works. Um, I'm going to cancel that because I don't want to change it because it those don't affect static, the version I have. It's more or less like mounting a file on a... Uh, it's exactly like mounting a file on a hard drive. But that does change the option of when the, the version that loads into RAM. Now, the RAM version is really fast if you got the RAM to support it, but my netbook doesn't, so I tend to run static. Those are the same as the options it gives you uh, if you use the persist all option at boot on your initial creation of the USB fi- of the live persistence files. Those are the same save options. But let's get to remaster. Oh, the big save button there is uh, is uh, is is the manual save button. Okay. So remaster is what we're going to use now. Now I'm going to do a general remaster. I'm not saving my home folder. Um, it actually doesn't matter because I have the home FS file. Okay. Do you want to save slash home in the remaster? No, I leave my home my home folder alone. And now it's going to check and see if I got enough room on a stick. Now I don't. I know I do. It, it, but you got to have more or less double what your file system currently is taking up. So we really don't recommend using less than an eight gig stick for the live, a live remaster. A uh, four is going to be too small. You'll never make it. Okay, the following files exist already. There's some new old files. This may be left over from a previous remaster. Do you want to fix this? Uh, yes. Because otherwise I got to quit. So should it be deleted? Uh, yes. I'm going to delete the old ones. What should we do with Linux old? I'm going to delete that one. Okay, so now all my old files are de- are deleted. I'm ready to create a new Linux FS file. Remember, that's the file that that normally is read only. The nor- why we need the persistence file um, to save changes because this system is read only. We're going to make a new read only file system with all of our changes. We're going to take all the changes from the root FS and cram them into the Linux FS file. So yes. Uh, yeah, we want the fast option. Do you want to use all the CPUs? Yes, please. Uh, and I don't want a title. And there it goes. Now, I'm going to stop recording while this happens, because this is going to take a long time. On my system, this is going not recording. It takes some sometimes between 15 and 20 minutes. So I'm going to pause here, but just let it go and do its thing. Don't use your system for anything, because it's copying the file system. And we don't want to make changes to the file system while it's being copied. Okay, see you in a few. Okay, we're back, and we have now created a new compressed file system file. And it says where it's created, and the size, which you can see now it's one it's 1.739 uh, gigs. Actually, it's, never mind, it's 1,739 megs. Actually, it only took about five and a half minutes, or six minutes on the on this system. Uh, I usually remaster on the netbook, and the netbook takes a lot longer. So that was nice to know. I, I moved it over to the HP tonight to make this video. So this file will be used the next time we boot. If there's a problem, you can use the rollback boot option to return to the current system. So the old files are still there. They'll be used in the event that you need to do a rollback. But if you boot and everything's okay, you can delete them like we did now. Do you want to make a new rootfs new file now? This file will be used on reboot. Now, here's the thing. This system is, uh, this part of the system is a little bit older and it has been updated with large capacity drives in mind. So I'm actually going to wait for the reboot to let my system, uh, I'll just make the new persistence files from the boot, from the, from the boot system the way, way you normally always do. So no, I don't want to make a rootfs new file right now. And that's it. I'm done. It's all set up, ready to go. I'll do a quick reboot, and this uh, f- uh, it, it, those files will be transformed into the new 
system that reboots it, that the, those the new file we just created will be used upon reboot. So that's it. We're done. The new Linux FS file we use on reboot. We'll have a nice, clean, brand new rootfs file that is free, totally empty. Six, I can, I can, in my case, six gigabytes of free space open again, and all of our apps. We haven't deleted any apps. There, all the apps are still on the system, ready to be used. For tips, tricks, how tos, head over to mxlinux.org or throw up a post at forum.mxlinux.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great night. <laughs>